at the same time, things were happening in Ukraine. Uh, really big time things happening in Ukraine. And the um, horror of what is happening to the women and the children and the men there. Um, but uh, I was particularly feeling um, about how the women's lives were being so disrupted, at the least to say, and um, what is it that we as women do? And what is it that we as women do when, when we are together in a group? And um, so I started thinking about the quilting process that women have been doing this for a long, long time. And um, what would it be like to do a ceramic quilt? And um, then as I started to think about it further, I knew that I couldn't really do what I had in mind by myself. And I've never done a collaborative piece. I don't think, Wallace, do you think that's right? I can't recall doing a collaborative piece with somebody else. Yeah, you and I made one of those rugs when I was 10, but I think <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So, um, so I asked my friends about this. What if, what if we were to do this? Leah came, where, is it? where are you, Leah? There you are, yeah, Leah. Leah came over and um, said, well, I have this idea, and um, we really should probably have this quilt on some fabric or some kind of a backing. Um, but, but the idea of even foam core was like, <clears throat> it's just not right, it's gotta be fabric. You know, it's gotta move in order to be alive. Mm -hmm. And so I happened to have this big collection of indigo fabric from my daughter who used to work for Ralph Lauren in his uh, fabrics in, in the home furnishings. Your, your daughter? What? You said your mother? No, my oh, daughter. Your daughter, okay, Yes, sorry. yes. Um, this Indian, uh, Indian yeah, indigo. Sorry. And the wonderful thing about it is that it's already drawn out in squares. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's woven with these wonderful lines. So, so, uh, so Leah and I decided that the, the fabric was right. We had to make the tiles. So more women came and we started rolling out clay, rolling it out just like you would roll a uh, pie crust mm. and pie dough, I guess you would say at that point. And uh, then we got, you know, they had to be no thicker than that. And then they had to be cut. And so we we're getting into cutting them then and getting, they could be any size up to two by two would be the most, I don't think any that big ended up. Um, and then we had to poke holes in them so that we could sew them. And so, not everybody poked the right size hole. So a lot of holes had to be drilled. Uh, and Leah got in on that again. And then people were running all over town trying to find the Dremel, Dremel uh, diamond head drills because only diamond head will work. <laughs> Even though it says for pottery and glass, mm -hmm. no. <laughs> anyway, not this, this is high fire. And so we had to have, um, we must have gone through, oh, 10 drill bits, I think and uh, got all we could in town from <laughs> Ace Hardware and Home Depot and on and on. Then the uh, tiles were fired and um, some of them also we mixed in a cobalt oxide. So some of them are blue. Mm -hmm. And there are some blue uh, beads here too from the blue clay. I like to make beads also. And so the, the blue that you see is cobalt oxide. Um, which has turned out to be, um, it comes from Persia, and now they're finding it in Africa. It's very mm -hmm. expensive, it's used for radiation and cancer treatment. Um, uh, and anyway, it's very precious and becoming even more so. Um, and then we, we fired them once, and then every tile was washed with rutile. And uh, then the rutile was wiped back, and that gives it that kind of ochre color. Um, and then they were glazed on top of them, mm -hmm. so we fired them again, and um, put high fire glaze where they were going to be shiny and bright, and um, no glaze uh, where they could be flat, and we fired them again. So we've been fired three or four times, except for the ones that weren't the right color. <laughs> they got glazed and fired again. So. The tiles went through that. Then we started sewing them on. And um, I had only one rule, um, that, the, that there be an outside border 
uh, Hetty label is not here, but Hetty was the one that uh, said there's got to be something to hold those tiles together. So all the dark ones are going to go around the outside so that we get a frame holding them together. And then um, I said this tile has got to be in the center. So I measured it to make sure that that style tile stayed in the center and then others could put other tiles anywhere they wanted. And so that started where people would arrange them and then they would sew them in uh, or they would arrange them and that would be all they would do and then they would leave and then they would become back and be a little upset to discover that their arrangement had changed and <laughs> somebody else thought better of it. Um, so we've sewn and um, Maureen and Donna both got very involved in the sewing, sewing part of it. Um, and Jessica has sewn and sewed and sewn her, and blisters on the ends of our fingers. Mm. Um, waking up in the middle of the night with my hands like this, running for the bend gate, uh, <laughs> got to calm down the... Uh... Did any of you end up with blisters on your yeah. hands? Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, the, the tiles are a little sharp and gritty. So, is there anything else about the sewing or the construction of this that you would add to it? Symbols. Well, uh, okay, yeah. Um, yeah. Corrine, did you want us to share a little bit? Or? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, because I just, I was thinking about this and it was so amazing. I don't want to blow up just a couple of minutes. I'll just stand. Um, that, um, you know, it's a, it's a little bit, it's been a little bit like stepping in a river with this collaborative project because uh, Maureen and I, the, one part that we were in, we were working in the studio on a, another art day, and then Colleen just said, how would you like to work on some of these tiles and put symbols on them? And so we said, oh, and then you told us, we didn't hear the whole backstory, and uh -huh. it, was, it was an ongoing story that was evolving anyway. So we said, sure, well, well what type of symbols? And Colleen just said, well, any type of symbols. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, what was amazing for me to find that as I was making each of these tiles, the symbols were just rolling out, you know, whatever. It wasn't like thinking, well, I make a round circle or do this and that. They were just continuous, and I was aware of that myself, thinking, this is amazing. You know, we're just full of symbols. So that was that day, and so stepping out of the river, I didn't know I was going to step back in again, and the next time that I stepped back in, now I'm hearing what was behind this. When I came in, there were already people sewing the tiles, and. Colleen just said, well, Donna, why don't you work on making a straight edge? And I think this was my edge. So I got, got there and thought, oh, this is easy. Look at this. I can just loop these in and out. So I was making this line, and then the other. It was getting about time for me to go, but it's like, okay, but now I have more time. And I went, uh-oh. <laughs> my plan is over now because this is a whole other ball game. And you were speaking to that about how to lace them. And so the next time I saw it, I, I came back and the first I saw it and went, wow, look at all the, now all this, the threads are different colors. And then <laughs> Colleen talked about that a little and she said, well, that went through my mind too, but I just let that go right away because now everybody has their hand in it. So it was a great permission mm -hmm. to just, you know, let the, let the story yeah. unfold. Yeah. And then somehow, I mean, every time I left, I thought, how is that going to happen? You know, and then it kept on happening. <laughs> And, and happening so so the very the very last of course was seeing all this and then my my thought was too in that making the straight lines I just thought this is really true it just takes so many different hearts and minds mm -hmm. to enter into this plan and it's just been so amazing mm -hmm. so <laughs> yeah, great, great. you're a stitch too you know I know Donna's stitch <laughs> you know she's got a running stitch <laughs> Yeah, and I that was he's done, uh, some other people have an X stitch. And Jessica, you started out with red thread. Do you want to say a, a little bit about your part in this? Uh, sure. I noticed that while we were doing this project, um, I couldn't do my own work as I thought in my head. And then I began to realize that this was my own work. It was part oh. of the group. But for a while I was thinking, she's just like Tom Sawyer in the whitewash. He's <laughs> 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 just got his own... <laughs> <laughs> but I absolutely adore it. Jessica is my assistant, so she <laughs> comes and goes a lot. <laughs> and it became 
a true obsession. I mean, we, we would go to bed, you know, thinking about, oh, we've got to get up and do some more. But uh, I think the end result is just magical. And I, mm -hmm. So where you where you see the red thread, that's Jessica. Mm. Um, <laughs> but we could only use it in a couple places because we discovered that the red thread couldn't hold up. It was a little it's too shredded. Yeah, it's a little woolly, and it would catch the the tiles would catch the red thread. Yeah. Uh, and we started out with a hemp, a, a really nice beige hemp, but then we discovered a beautiful blue hemp in there, and so we've got a, a, started using that for that. Oh, and one, one last detail. Um, yeah. You wanted to take the whole thing out in the salt air and let it stretch. And I was saying, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's flat, don't let it stretch. But now I see that you let it stretch in advance so that it couldn't stretch here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, true. You let it stretch and then lock it onto the fabric. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so, Maureen, Leah, what would you go well, I uh, oops, uh, had small participation in many parts of it, and uh, every you were time rolling out. Yeah, well, the first the first was making the the marks that were just you know it was so lovely you know permission to make any mark, and I wasn't thinking of heavy symbols. I was thinking, oh, this is like a fork does this, and uh, it uh -huh. was uh, it was sweet because there was just again so much permission, and then coming to it when uh, when some of the you know cake pan kind of shapes had been already scored and uh you know arriving at a point where uh some of the scores were like you know some of the shapes were kind of like this <laughs> and so how to continue that and so continuing the irregular was the objective i think and uh and then uh working with uh you know like you take on a corner to, to sort of tie them together and uh there's no way to tie those things together because you know the knots, you know the the, the the threads don't go all the way through or whatever obstacles there were. It was like um, it was it was like encountering obstacles and you know letting go of uh, concepts of square or uh, those kinds of you know silly ideas and uh, and and seeing how kind of uh, basically believing in your vision. Mm -hmm. Believing, you know, like this mm -hmm. is this is so erratic, and like God, nobody should look at the back, and mm -hmm. uh, all of that. And uh, but yet, um, it's been uh, it's been a sweet, sweet, sweet mm -hmm. participation. I feel like you know, one hand in the mm -hmm. yeah. one hand in the middle. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for allowing oh, me to do it. Yeah, you're reminding me about the bead part because we. We, the, the whole thing of it being squares, and then we run into the odd shapes, and the odd shapes pretty soon left odd areas, and then came the idea, oh, I have some leftover beads, we'll just fill in those spots with beads, and it gives it a nice, uh, changes the texture of it. Leo, what would you say? You were quite an engineer about this. Uh, just a pleasure to work on it. I worked on it um, in lots of different stages of it, but, um, Maybe you said this, Colleen, I'm not sure, but it began, or, or the way I thought it began, was about a new language. Yes, I'm glad you're raising that. Very cool. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, that, there is a, a new language uh, happening, and we're definitely a part of it. And um, it's, the, it's words like self and collective unconscious and um, shadow, animus, anima. Uh, personal growth, self-actualization. This is a whole new language that is unfolding that, you know, how teenagers will have their own language. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> but we're in the human potential movement and we have a language that's unfolding. And one of the things that I think is happening in the language is that we're uh, going from ABC to symbols. And uh, that's, a as we develop, are unconscious, we get better at interpreting symbols. You know, it's very hard for the Western mind to go into a cave painting and understand what the message is because we're so linear. You know, we want it to say T H E. <laughs> and, uh, so we've got a lot to learn in terms of our, our uh, developing our brains to be able to do that. 
Um, one of my favorite artists that, that we've discovered recently is Helma Af Klimt. And she um, was painting in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and is now recognized as the first abstract painter. And in her paintings, which she uh, believed were coming from voices uh, that she heard in seances, um, uh, she, uh, those voices told her to put these letters into her paintings because one day people will understand what these letters mean. So some of those letters are in here. Hmm. Uh, she's also developed, later she developed a dictionary in terms of what the letters meant, what the words meant. And they have very lovely meanings like um, uh, the soul that just found itself huh. or lost in darkness um, or the smell of heaven. Wow. And they're very wonderful ideas um, in this language that she unfolded. And realizing that at that same time that they were having seances and such in the, in the uh, middle 1800s, they were also di discovering x-ray and uh, telegraphic um, communication across the Atlantic. The telephone had come in, uh, telegraph, and so they were aware that there were other energies, other levels of energy, and that was why the seances were so popular at that time, uh, because they were hoping that they could also uh, communicate across death lines with other people. So uh, so she uh, did some brilliant things. So I put some of Hilma's uh, mm. letters in here, too. So um, if you look closely, you'll see that there are words like ego and consciousness and unconscious and Indian symbols that I'm not sure what they mean, but I've seen them many times. Symbols for water, symbols for sun, uh, symbol, symbols for outer space, um, and many for the I Ching. I, I particularly like the first um, trigram or hexagram of the I Ching, which is creativity, um, a, a double solid lines. And so there are several of those in here as well. And a lot of uh, symbols of the sun and the moon uh, together, uh, separate masculine images, feminine images. So you'll see a lot of that. And then there are all of these that we don't know yet, mm -hmm. <laughs> that we don't know yet. Uh, and, and watching people do this, watching the women rolling out the clay and cutting away the tiles and brushing on the glazes and sewing and sewing and passing the needle through what's going on here when Jessica had to do a repair up in this area and passing the needle through and then somebody else saying, passing it back, have you got it, have you got it, you know? <laughs> um, so I wrote a poem. Um, about these ladies, and um, this poem is an ode to the women of Ukraine. Women with clay, rolling pins, knives, forks, marking off cookie tiles with signs and symbols, we know not what. Touches of gold, ovens bake mysterious concoctions, needles, thread, not tying. This has been going on forever. This will go on forever. Mm. Beautiful. Oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah. Say, Colleen, just in the interest of time, we've got to get um, to Sherry and me, to, and then we're going to have dinner. So. so do you want to talk here, or do you want to talk in the gallery? Should we move in the gallery? I'd like to talk in the gallery. Okay, so let's let's move into the gallery. So, That's so beautiful. Thank you. It is beautiful.